So, according to the next set of instructions, we join the two halves of the wings together. So I'm going to flip this wing over, like so. Here's the wing that I also put the vortex generators on. Flip this over. Now you can see when the wings are together, this will be the flap connection and the servo, single servo, sits here. And there's no gluing of these wings, it doesn't say anything about gluing. All it says is insert this into one of the wings, which I will do now. That's it, as far as it will go. Then insert into the other wing, which is there. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that's it. And put this one, this wing bracket on them. Now, you can probably tell now that by joining those like that, there is a bit of dihedral on that wing as well. See what happens when we put this plastic wing joiner, this piece in. That and that going there. That and that going there. Mm -hmm. Push that down, push that down. Okay, I can see what that's doing now. That's binding those two wings together. It's holding them together very well, actually. Let's see, it comes through there. That's quite good. Quite good. And I suppose you must put screws through there. So that will hold that together well enough for me to start putting our servo in here. But that's all you do on the wing, and then basically that goes on top of the plane. I love the way they've got these uh, plastic pads where your horn goes give it some strength you see how this works it's got a wire going through like a rod going through to that flap and a rod going through to that flap and these are both connected to the same servo so i've got one of these small servos it's a high performance 8.4 gram torque 4.8 volts, 1.5 kilograms, and I've installed the horn slightly forward so it moves back. And the instructions say that that's got to go there. And they say use double sided tape. That goes in there, have to do it that way, and then they connect up. Now this kit also gives you tiny bits of rubber to hold the clevises together. These are funny old things because the clevis itself has just got holes and these plastic bits on here have got the lugs that the clevises clip onto. The other thing I've seen or heard is that if you put double sided tape on that this paint comes away and then the whole lot comes off because you're just binding onto the paint. So I've got to test that so I'm going to put a bit of double sided tape on it and then pull it off. So let's just try that, there we are. Uh, double sided tape on there and then you go doop, yep look, see that? So be aware. The thing that gets me is that this is not a new aircraft yet no one has seen fit in their videos to actually tell you about this. I've seen one video where they mention it but that's because it happens as they're installing the servo. But I can't, haven't seen a single video on YouTube that says, oh by the way everyone watch out for this because the paint will just come straight off. Now we've uh, avoided that, we can cut a nice square of double sided tape and put it in place. So I just want to get that measured up. It goes up to there. 
let's get this in. This will hold the servo in place. Hopefully, now that that's stuck in there, directly onto the phone. What I might do is get a hot glue gun once this is in here and on the sticky tape. I might get a hot glue gun and just put a little bit of hot glue around it as well, just to help keep it in place. So what I've done here, I've pushed that rubber over each of these clevises. It can't come up this way of course because this is sort of soldered together. It's quite a good solder weld. So I don't have any concerns with that coming off. Let's put the servo on next. Get under here. Okay, put that on there, Let's push that down. <sighs> yeah, I'll definitely be putting some hot glue around this. Let's just put that like that for now. Oh, there it is. Let's put this through here, through the middle one. Uh, it seems to be okay. Of course you can't test these because you can't move them because the actual flaps are still very much part of the wing because I have not got to the point where you cut them. Right over there. I can see them binding. Mind you they come down at the same time don't they? They don't counter move with each other. I've got two new scalpel blades. I've got two cuts to make. One is to take this chunk out so this channel is continuous without this blockage here. And the second cut is here to free this up and uh, you can have quite a gap. It does have a line on it so I think I'll be using that. So let's start here. we're going to do is use this inside line here and then use this crease actually it's a crease it's not a line cut that line first there and I'm going to use my very deep blade for this cut along there try not to cut my wife's tablecloth when you do it now, as I said, these are three mils, so I can actually afford <clears throat> one, two, three to come out to this crease here. Oh, but it's gonna, I might not have done this the best way. Let's shove it in a bit, and I'll just cut it across there. It might, it's not three mil, but it will do. There we go. Take that out. That's the hole we've cut there, I don't know if you can see that. Now I've got to cut this triangle out. This shouldn't be too difficult as long as I stay at the angle that these are at. Now I'll just move that one. Okay, that's one. Let me come back this way. I'll cut the same angle. So this is one continuous piece. And it should just come out. There we are. Now obviously I can't try this even though I've cut it free because it's joined here to this one. So I have to do the same with this one. Let's cut along there first. There we are. And that's a small blade. So let's go over to the bigger blade. 
There we go, okay. And then we can come at least three mil. I'll mark it. With my first cut. So I'll have to turn this round. It's much easier cutting this way. So I'll put this onto here. It might be a bit overkill actually, but oh, it's all right, it's okay. Let's uh, stay with it. No. Excellent. I see here the hole. The hole on this side. Then we're just going to cut this wedge out. Again, if I use the wrong blade, keeping it running along this as a guide. I should be able to. It's amazing, it's already gone blunt. So I really should have got a new blade. Got four or five cuts of it's blunt. Uh, well, let's see if we can push it out. So we can push it out this way. See if this one's sharper. This one isn't longer though. Yeah, that's sharper. Let it come out. Come on. Yeah. And you can see where you cut now. These should now work. Now here's my ancient but wonderful Ripmax servo tester. I'll put that on. Okay, let's see what happens. So what I've had to do, it's not perfect yet and I'll have to do some trimming on the transmitter, but what I've done is this horn has been taken off and put on in the far rear really downward position for the flaps. I've then used my servo tester to see what extreme movements I can get. And if I tr program my transmitter to do like 110%, I can put these back up into the neutral position. I've also had to disconnect these clevises, screw these up more so they're coming up towards the top of the rod, and screw the clevises out more so they meet them. Um, I've also put hot glue all around the servo to help keep it in place. But I'm happy with how it's turned out. So the flaps are in, they're going to need some adjustment once it's all plugged together and on the transmitter and receiver. In the meantime, I'm going to flip back to the build instructions and work on the undercarriage.